कुलवंत सिंह जी चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर थ्री आर वेस्ट फाउंडेशन से कृपया आए और अपने विचार हम सबसे साझा करें तो एक जोरदार तालियों द्वारा स्वागत कीजिए माननीय डॉक्टर कुलवंत सिंह जी का Thank you very much uh, for giving this opportunity, respected Padma Bhushan Dr. Bindeshwar Pathak ji, who has already addressed through his message to us, distinguished speakers on the dais, Professor Reena Marwa ji, Dr. Professor Banisha Priyam, Dr. D P Singh ji, Paru Lagarwal ji, Uday Sharma ji. Friends of the dais, Shri Ajay Kumar ji, of course, Dr. N. B. Mojumdar ji here, ladies and gentlemen. Manisha ji ne toh bhot achha baashan diya aur bataya issues ko leke. Main sirf pehle shuruat mein ye kehna chahta hu ki jo vision Dr. Bindeshwar Pathak ne 1968 mein dikhai, duniya ko कई सालों बाद इसका इस इशू का पता चला सन 2000 में मिलेनियम डेवलपमेंट गोल्स बनाए गए यूनाइटेड नेशन जनरल असेंबली ने एक सौ नब्बे बानवे कंट्रीज ने मिल के लेकिन उसमें सैनिटेशन शामिल नहीं हो पाया वाटर किया गया लेकिन सैनिटेशन शामिल नहीं हो पाया इट वॉज ए मैटर ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग दो में साउथ अफ्रीका में जॉनसबर्ग में जो एक कॉन्फ्रेंस हुई डब्ल्यू के नाम पे उसमें ये चिंतन हुआ और कहा गया कि हमें कुछ टारगेट सेट करने चाहिए कि सैनिटेशन को भी अपने टारगेट्स में शामिल करें तो जो ग्लोबल तौर पे आज हम डिस्कस कर रहे हैं मैं उसके बारे में कुछ बातें बताना चाहता हूँ आज की तारीख में इस धरती के ऊपर देर आर एट बिलियन पीपल ऑन दिस प्लेनेट आठ बिलियन आठ सौ करोड़ ऑफ दीज एट बिलियन नियरली फिफ्टी परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑन दिस अर्थ आर स्टिल नॉट हैविंग राइट काइंड ऑफ टॉयलेट्स दे आर हैविंग पुअर क्वालिटी टॉयलेट्स दैट रूइन देयर हेल्थ and pollute their environment inadequate sanitation systems they do spread human waste into rivers lakes and soil contaminating the water resources under our feet safely managed sanitation prote protects groundwater from human waste pollution and everyone must have access to a toilet connected to a sanitation system that effectively removes and treats human waste aaj ki tarikh mein hamare mulk ke andar bhi sirf 28 pratishat jo water hai wo treat hota hai waste water jisko aap kehte hain 72% pani jo hai usi tarah se shamil ho jata hai rivers mein so we have gathered here to observe world toilet day which is held globally every year since 2013 aur jaise aapko bataya ki ye dr pathak ji ka ek sapna tha aur dr pathak ji ne isko push kiya aur government of singapore ne ek resolution ke taur pe united nation general assembly ke samne rakha aur ye 2013 se hum isko har saal world toilet day ke roop mein manate hain taaki hum is issue ko ke har ek ghar mein एक शौचालय होना चाहिए इसको पुश करते हैं सो so, ऑलरेडी मेरे प्रीवियस स्पीकर्स ने इस इसके थीम के बारे में बात किया है कि वर्ल्ड टॉयलेट डे जो 2022 का है इसकी थीम है मेकिंग द इनविजिबल विजिबल मेकिंग द इनविजिबल विजिबल विच फोकसेज ऑन द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द सैनिटेशन क्राइसिस 
on ground water. And you know, in our country, 60% to 80% of the drinking water is from the ground water. 60 to 80% is from the ground water. So therefore, you know, we don't want a, another crisis to emerge and we like to protect the ground water that way. Ground water is the world's most abundant source of fresh water. It supports drinking water supplies, sanitation systems, farming, industry, and ecosystems. And climate change worsens and populations, as populations grow, groundwater is very vital for human survival. We cannot overlook the link between sanitation and groundwater. It's very, very important. The central message for this day, today, World Toilet Day, is that safely managed sanitation protects groundwater from human waste pollution. Currently, the world is seriously off track to meet the promise of Sustainable Development Goal 6.2. What does 6.2 say? To ensure safe toilets for all by 2030. So 2030 may sir of art he sal bache hai. And as I said, 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 you see, World Toilet Day is an official United Nations International Observance Day on 19th November to inspire action to tackle the global sanitation crisis. Worldwide, as on date, out of 8 billion people, 4.2 billion people, they live without safely managed sanitation. And around 673 million people, they practice open defecation. On 28th July 2010, it's a very important date, 28th July 2010, the United Nations General Assembly, con having 193 countries, adopted a historical resolution recognizing the right to safe and clean drinking water and sanitation as a human right that is essential for the full enjoyment of life and all human rights. And therefore, all governments, including our own government, has given an endorsement to this resolution that it is a human right to have a safe sanitation. In 2020, around one in four people, they lacked safely managed drinking water in their homes and nearly Half the world's population lacked safely managed sanitation. COVID-19, when it came, it highlighted the urgent need to ensure everyone can access good hand hygiene. At the onset of the pandemic, three in 10, thus may say teen logon ke paas ghar mein worldwide, they could not wash their hands with soap and water within their homes, because even safe water was not available. WHO, UNICEF, har saal ek report nikalti hai, usko joint uh, uh, program bolte hai, isko JMP. This makes it clear that if current trends persist, billions of children and families will be left without critical life-saving wash services. उन्होंने लिखा है बेसिकली कि अगर इसी स्पीड पे हम काम करेंगे तो by 2030 जो ज्यादा दूर नहीं है only 81 percent of the world's population will have access to safe drinking water at home leaving nearly 1.6 billion people without safe drinking water only 67 percent will have safe sanitation services leaving nearly 3 billion people without safe sanitation. And only 78% will have 
basic hand washing facilities, leaving 1.9 billion people without that. So this joint monitoring program report also notes vast inequalities with vulnerable children and families suffering the most. Let me now share some facts about water and sanitation in India. Four decades ago, zyada purani baat nahi hai. In 1980, rural sanitation coverage in our country was estimated at 1%. So, mein se ek ghar mein sanitation in our country 1980. By 2018, things changed. It reached 95%. From 1% to 95%. The share of Indians with access to improved sources of water also increased significantly from 72% in 1990 to 88% in 2008. However, many people still lack access to water and sewage infrastructure. According to an estimate, 2018 estimate, only two Indian cities, we have 8,000 cities in the country. I am saying out of these 8,000, only two Indian cities have a continuous water supply. When I say continuous water supply, means 24 into 7. And about 8% of Indians still lack access to improved sanitation facilities. So the water supply and sanitation in India, no doubt, has improved drastically since the 1980s. But still, there are many challenges. Depleting groundwater table and deteriorating groundwater quality, they are threatening the sustainability of both urban and rural water supply in many parts of India. Aaj humare jo shahar hai, unme 450 million log rehte hai. By 2030, our cities will be 600 million people. Next year, our world population, ke mutabek, hamari apni population, it will be more than China. So therefore, the challenges are many. In 2015, 44% had access to basic sanitation or 65% in urban areas and 34% in rural areas. In 2015, I am mentioning 2015 particularly because that was the last year for the Millennium Development Goals which were agreed in the year 2000. So final estimates were available for 2015. There were, in 2015, there were still 150 million people without access to at least basic water. Or already, I think my previous speakers have mentioned that in 2015, हमारे मुल्क के अंदर 50% लोगों के पास सैनिटेशन फैसिलिटी नहीं थी। इस टाइम आल्सो टू मेंशन के रिमार्केबल अचीवमेंट। वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग दिस वर्ल्ड टॉयलेट डे इन सुलब। एंड सुलब फाउंडर हैज शोन अ विजन मोर देन 50 इयर्स अगो दैट वर्ल्ड नीड्स इस बेसिक थिंग। so this is a remarkable achievement of Swachh Bharat Mission in sanitation, no doubt about it. Swachh Bharat Mission was also a vision of our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji who pushed it and he saw to it that by 2018 actually at least most of the country should be open defecation free. Urban areas of 35 states and union territories, they became ODF, open defecation free. Total of 4,340 cities, they have declared themselves ODF, of which 4,558 cities, 4,258 cities, or urban local bodies, they have been certified as open defecation free after third party certification by 31-12-20. And from January to March 2021, 4,270 ULBs, urban local bodies, they are estimated to be certified as ODF. I'll omit some part because more statistics are not really necessary, but I can only say that for years, most Indians depended on on-site sanitation facilities, which means 
mainly pit latrines in rural areas. The government has been investing heavily in building sanitation units. In a nationwide campaign called the Swachh Bharat Mission with satisfying results, between 2014 and 2020, the Indian government managed to make household toilets accessible to over 99% of the population. This translates to a total of 110 million toilets. 11 crore toilets which the government has supported since 2014. Preceding this success is the success of the slums sanitation program in Mumbai that provided access to sanitation for a quarter million slum dwellers. Let me now mention a few facts about, you know, today's occasion. Aaj ka jo theme rakha gaya, the theme of today's symposium, which is organized by Solab International Social Service Organization, it is Solab International's contribution towards SDG 6.2. जो आज तक किया सुलभ ने वो रिमार्केबल है लेकिन सुलभ का जर्नी यहां समाप्त नहीं होता सुलभ का जर्नी बहुत लंबा है मैंने बताया 800 करोड़ लोगों के बीच में 400 करोड़ लोगों के पास अभी भी प्रॉपर सैनिटेशन फैसिलिटी नहीं है सो द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एसडीजी 6.2 इज टू अचीव एक्सेस टू एडिक्वेट एंड इक्विटेबल सैनिटेशन एंड हाइजीन फॉर ऑल and end open defecation, paying special attention to the needs of women, girls, and those in vulnerable situations by 2030. So I am saying that our Solab's plate is no doubt full, but we still have a long journey to go, and we all together have to work closely. See, my association with Solab has been since 1992, you know, and we have been really working, trying to make use of the technology of solar and share it with several African countries. We have, I think solar has been also working without any charge. This transfer of technology has been without any charge. And, you know, I would say that thanks to Honorable Dr. Patak, who deputed their teams going all the way to Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and several other African countries to share their knowledge and show them the way how in a small amount, very affordable, you know, you try to, you can you know, certainly build the toilets. As a non-government organization, they have been working for more than five decades to address the problems of sanitation faced by low-caste, economically weaker section people in India. It has constructed 10,000 public toilet blocks and millions of private toilets, giving access to sanitation to several million people. Dr. Bindeshwar Pathak, founder of Sulab, they have he has dedicated his whole life in the field of sanitation. And he has also worked hard to rescue the manual scavengers from the demeaning, you know, job of cleaning night soil. I would like to congratulate the entire team of Solab who have been helping them to gain alternative dignified work. They have exceeded in bringing them into the social mainstream. Many of them have set up small enterprises selling you know, noodles and poppers and many other professionals, including beauty parlors. You know, it's very, very interesting. It's very nice to see how they have actually, you know, really changed the entire thing. So they take, uh, you know, basically now they are sharing with many things with others. So Sulab International, they have been striving for universal sanitation and public health since over half a century, Sulab has brought a qualitative change in the you know, sanitation scenario of India with the in inventions, so technologies for safe and hygienic disposal of human waste, and also for recycling the same to generate energy. Sulab has set up 
not only all these toilets that I have mentioned already, but I think they have really brought a social change, a real social change in the lives of millions of people. The world recognized Sulab's work through its founder, Dr. Bindeshwar Pathak. But let me also say that as an organization, Sulab enjoys a United Nations consultation, consultative uh, status of the United Nations ECOSOC. It is not a small thing that the Sulab, Dr. Pathak, you know, is the advisor to the whole world through the United Nations ECOSOC. And Dr. Patak was awarded also Padma Bhushan, which is the best civil, highest civilian award by the government of India. In 2003, his name was added to the Global 500 Roll of Honor. He also received the Energy Globe Award and the Dubai International Award for Best Practices. Stockholm Water Prize was also awarded to Dr. Patak for his work. This Stockholm Water Prize is actually equivalent to the Nobel Prize in water. You know, this was awarded to him in the year 2009. Sulab International has been working both in Asian and African countries and sharing and transferring its technology without any special charges. I have already mentioned that. <coughs> During my tenure as Regional Advisor, Urban Basic Services Branch of the UN Habitat, I had the pleasure and honor to facilitate several international training programs organized by Sulab International for African countries. Nearly 30 African countries participated in those programs in which actually this knowledge was really shared. Sulab approach was essentially, it has showed the way for the circular sanitation economy. Aaj ki tariq mein, 21st century mein ye ek nai terminology hum use karte hain circular economy ki lekin ye jo concept hai ye practically naam nahi bhi use karte hue dr patak ne jab ye kaam start kiya tha to ye circular economy ki vision jo hai unhone 50 saal pehle dikha di thi duniya ko so basically i would say that they have shown the way for the circular sanitation economy by using dried septage as compost, fertilizer, generating biogas for generating electricity, and cooking and treating black and gray water for productive uses. This symposium has a special significance in our country where we are still facing the major challenge of urbanization and continued need for transformative solutions for new business values and sustainable sanitation. Sulab has a very major role until the achievement of SDG 6 by the developing countries in Asia and Africa, where Sulab has been involved in building their capacities to achieve the sanitation goals. And I would say that this journey is very, very long, where actually all of you have to really show to the world how do we really achieve this goal. I would like to congratulate the organizers for this wonderful event and thanks for all those. Sabka shukriya, sabka. I bhi abhinandan karta hoon, jaise Priyam ji ne kaha, ke aap sab is journey mein shamil hai aur hume is journey ko pura karna hai. Inhi shabdo se, thank you so much. Jai Hind.